and welcome to our Culture Magazine here on I-24 News. I'm Odid Grober and today we have a lovely show for you. We'll have uh, artist Michel Platnik right here in the studio to discuss his new exhibition titled After. Also a uh, look at the Doc Aviv Documentary Film Festival. And we'll talk about the Israeli films that are getting attention all around the world. Let's begin, though, with some cultural headlines. The story of the art collection looted by the Nazis, which was held by Cornelius Gerlitt, did not end with his death on Tuesday. It was announced on Wednesday that the Swiss Kunstmuseum in Bern was named as the sole heir to Gerlitt's significant and contested art collection. The museum announced in a statement that it had no previous connection with Gerlitz and that they were, quote, surprised and delighted to receive the collection. Gerlitz uh, died in the Munich apartment where he kept most of the 1400 paintings, including works by Renoir, Matisse and Picasso that were confiscated in 2012. The Bern Kunstmuseum will have a lot of work sorting out the different claims on the art and said that they now face, quote, a considerable burden of responsibility and a wealth of questions of the most difficult and sensitive kind. Indeed. Bernie TD, the convicted murderer portrayed by Jack Black in the 2011 movie Bernie, has been released from prison on Tuesday. T.D. was convicted in 2009 of murdering 81-year-old millionaire Marjorie Nugent. The case was made famous by the film, directed by Richard Linklater, who was drawn to T.D.'s story. Now, in a strange twist, it has been revealed that Linklater will take Bernie in and let him live at his home. Linklater became close with T.D. during the making of his movie and even testified in his favor during his parole hearing, saying, quote, I was very impressed in prison how the other inmates looked up to him. He seemed to be a very positive force in a negative environment. Sounds to me like we might see a sequel in a few years. Let's just hope it'll be a romantic comedy. Michel Platnik is a young Israeli artist known for combining painting with installations and video art. His new exhibition, After, at Tel Aviv's Gordon Gallery, takes uh, work, works by Francis Bacon and brings them to life. I'm happy to have Michel right here in the studio. Thank you for coming in today. Thanks to you. So um, tell me a little bit, because it's really hard to put in the, into words, tell me what you do. Well, what I, I did for the for that exhibition, the the one that shows in in Gordon, um, is to I, I I took works from Francis Bacon, right. uh, Francis Bacon, the famous uh, British artist, and I I I what I did is I I, I try to take his work to life. So how, how I did that? I for some of his works, I, I built an ins installation. Um, a place in my studio, a, right. a real place, and I put a person in it, and I painted on the person, and I painted on the set, and I filmed that, filmed and photographed that, and this is what I'm showing, videos and, and photographies. It's, it's, uh, the, the result is, is quite incredible. Is it an homage to, to Bacon? Is it a, a, I don't know, dimensional study of his work? How do you approach it? Um, I think it's 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 also an homage. I think he's uh, he's one of the great painter uh, of the second part of the 20th mm -hmm. century. Um, he his 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 paintings are amazing. I have studied them for a long time, read a lot about him. Mm -hmm. um, Why him? Really? Because there are a lot of good paintings uh, in the tw in the 20th century. Something must have spoken to you in his work. Yeah, I, th I think I've seen an exhibition of him and, and Lucien Ford, who, mm -hmm. who probably had the two um, artists I, I, I really uh, love and, 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 and made a lot of works uh, from them, from their works. Um, I, s I saw an exhibition that really influenced me. Um, uh, but I think, uh, you know, uh, maybe I, I didn't know why exactly, but when, when I started to read about him, I, I understood slowly why I'm so much attracted. Because apart from the painting abilities, there's also a period in which he lived, which is a post-war period. Right. And with it goes uh, a lot of beliefs, 
Mm-hmm. Um, he said a bit to be an existentialist, even if he probably he, he would probably not agree with that. Okay. But there is some something after the, after the war that is a, a belief that something mean, meaningless uh, in the life. Like he puts his characters, he closes he encloses them into the uh, into spaces, and probably uh, what interested me is to maybe free them. Free, free the characters. So not only the, the painting, but also uh, something more uh, ideological. I see. Now you work, uh, as as you mentioned, in in a lot of mediums. You know, you obviously you paint, and you you also it's an installation. You paint in, during the installation. You take a picture. You make a video art of it out of it. Working in all these different mediums is it natural for you? Um, it's actually many years. I, I, I study several um, fields. I was in several fields before being such in a, art, such as a bit of dancing, a bit of uh, uh, also technology, okay. uh, uh, theater, uh, a bit directing as well. So um, doing a lot of kind of sports. So I think I'm, I'm putting everything together in my this extreme works like. A filming day can be sometimes 24 hours in one shot. Wow. We cannot stop because the people are painted on, so we cannot do that in two days. So it, it sometimes it's a bit uh, stretching it to, to the end. It's the... kind of stretching it sometimes. Wow. And uh, um, I mean, the process then is is you start with an idea, or initially you know I'm going to make this into an installation, this into a, a photograph, or you start with one thing, then you're saying. Can we also add this? Uh, usually, it's a long process that um, the, it's, it comes first from like um, intuition, like okay, that's what I want to do, and then I, I search how I'm going to do that. And in the process of how, I, I start to to understand the, the idea. I make some tests. I try. Um, and 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 lately, I had to use a lot, like you said, um, performance, sculpting, also. Uh, filming and everything, everything has to be there in order to to make him uh, 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 live again, to, to right. make this work live again. So um, yeah, it, it goes, uh, it's a long process of test and, and learning uh, while doing. Uh, each each project um, lasts, a long, uh, uh, lasts a very long. Of course. Lasts very long. Last question: How do you get all this paint off of you at the end <laughs> of the day? It's uh, f- first of all, I, I work with a lot of models, but I, I test everything on me first. <laughs> but uh, you just like take off everything. I, I work with acrylic right. uh, directly on the body. And so it's just like a, a kind of plastic mask that I. So you have a collection remove. of masks at home from uh, your well, it doesn't, uh, work. <laughs> it doesn't last. It, it, it becomes a, a little bubble. <laughs> All right. Well, take it as an idea. Maybe those I'll masks could that. also work. <laughs> Michel, uh, thank you so much. And uh, a beautiful, beautiful exhibition. Thank, thank you. you. Now, the 16th annual Doc Aviv Festival, Tel Aviv's International Documentary Film Festival, will open tonight here in town. It is the only festival in Israel dedicated exclusively to documentary films. Daniel Campos takes a look at what's expected in this year's festival. The Dokabib Film Festival is a -a one-of-a-kind event in the Middle East, in a region where often politics, censorship and religious taboo can prevent the free expression of filmmakers. This is the perfect place and platform for a medium such as documentary film. This year, the festival offers a rich and diverse program. The first command I had was, don't act like uh, James Bond. Among the film screened is The Green Prince, the fascinating story of the son of a leading Hamas terrorist who became a spy and informant for the Israeli forces. One out of three is a story of a gay couple with the dream of fathering a child. Uh, this is the Burns. Sound of Torture, the story about Meron Estefanos and her activism through radio to save African refugees from being enslaved and tortured in the Sinai Desert. Almost friends about a friendship between Arab and Jewish children. Write down I'm an Arab. This is an epic portrait of Palestinian poet Mahmoud Darwish. Bialik, King of the Jews, a unique historical documentary with modern day animation about Israel's national poet Chaim Nachman Bialik. I'm here at the end of the road. 
A selection of international films will also be screened at the event, such as Iranian film Sepideh, about an Iranian girl from a traditional family who, against all odds, dreams of becoming an astronaut. He is a protector. He keeps the wolf from the door. And Supermatch, a fun portrait documentary of the exciting life and career of Jewish celebrity manager Shep Gordon. Seven films produced by students in the country's top film schools were also selected for the festival's annual student film competition. The festival will take place this year from May 8th to the 17th. Screening locations include the Tel Aviv Cinematheque, the Tel Aviv Port, the Cooperative Bar Bar Kaima, Levinsky Park, the Arab Jewish Community Center in Jaffa, and Abima Square. Israeli and international documentaries are presented during the festival. A vibrant, doc-loving audience of over 35,000 people were expected to attend this year. It'll be fun. Autostrad is a Jordanian indie band known across the Middle East. This month, they took a big step forward with uh, their debut performance in London. Here's the story. <laughs> Autostrad, Jordan's most exciting indie band, has taken a big step in their career by making their debut show in London last Friday. The band has performed in many countries in the Middle East, such as Syria, Egypt and Lebanon. But this was their first time in Europe. This is a very important experience for us because London is the capital of music and it is an excellent step for any band to come and perform here. The success behind Autostrad's music relies on the diversity of ingredients they are blending in together. The idea of Autostrad's music is to mix Jordanian slang with world music, whether it is reggae, Latin, funk, rock, or even oriental music. The band also tackles issues that interest the Jordanian and Arabian youth. Themes that we tackle through our songs reflect our personal lives, and this is how we create our songs, from an experience that one of us passes. Autostrad band means a lot to me because it was very popular in Syria, and it reminds me of my days back home. Their music is very relaxing and nice. It's not very familiar in the Arab world, and the subjects they tackle through the songs are very nice too. These kinds of bands speak for the youth in the Arab world, and now is the time for us, if we take into consideration the so-called Arab Spring. So it is great when such bands represent the new generation through their music, and that they are familiar with international music and confuse it with their local one. The ambitious band was formed in 2007, and they have released three albums so far. Although they are relatively new, they already have an audience of followers outside their homeland to ensure us that this is only the beginning for Autostrad's international career, not only in the indie music scene, but in general. Shachar Pelet is already right here in, her, in our studio for her segment off screen. Save me from myself. <laughs> I will. Okay, you did. Still in the spirit of the Israeli Independence Day, which was celebrated this week, um, it's a great opportunity to take a look at Israeli cinema these days, and the, the news are pretty good. Um, first of all, um, it's an all-time record this, this upcoming year, with 38 new Israeli films, all uh, with a possible nomination for the local Academy Awards, and the all-time record of the number of female directors. 12 women are directing films this year. It's a great... Feminine achievement, yes, that's, that's it's a impressive. great achievement in the business and in general, of yeah. course. Um, but there's still, I think, a difficulty to attract attentions of domestic and international uh, audiences. Um, if we take a look at uh, last year, only 10% of the Israeli films were successful in the box office, meaning around three this year. So if we'll take a look at the interesting ones this year, yes. which have a chance yes. to be successful. First of all, there's Talia Lavi's Zero Motivation, which we can see right now, already uh, a great success in the Tribeca Film mm -hmm. Festival, um, winning a major prize, their best narrative uh, film. And, um, well, it's this sort of uh, comic dramatic uh, uh, look at female soldiers I'm in really the Israeli Defense Forces. I think 
Israeli audiences will relate to it, and maybe even international Apparently, ones. Apparently, if it won Tribeca, it yes, must, you know, it absolutely. must speak a it universal lo it language. It looks hilarious, at least the trailer. It's all, also shot by the cameraman of the Israeli Oscar-winning uh, uh, footnote and Bethlehem, so it definitely stands It'll a chance. Look good as well. Another yeah. good achievement is that there's six Israeli entries in the Cannes Film Festival this year, which is considered the most prestigious film festival, um, with the first ever um, uh, Israeli film in the Cannes Classics, mm -hmm. the tribute the to Go -Go the masters Boys. of cinema, Gogo -Go Boys. We had uh, Hila Medalia, the director, uh, here. Um, also a story about Menachem Golan, Yoron Globus in the 1980s, um, very uh, supposed to be uh, hilarious and nostalgic. Unfortunately, we <laughs> have to end there. No. Shaha, I know you have a lot more to say, and uh, keep something for next week. Thank you, Shaha. Thank you, Adit. Thank you for joining us as well. I hope you enjoyed watching our show and that you'll choose to join us again tomorrow. Bye-bye.